Hi, I'm Bonnie Francis. We're talking about events that are going on in Queen Anne's County, and one of them is the Senior Summit, which will be happening May 15th out at the 4-H Park here in Centerville. I have with me today Heather Guerreri, who is from the Compass Regional Hospice. Mm -hmm. um, first off, Heather, talk about the name change, because I know that most people know now, but some of them may not know why that all happened and what happened. Sure, sure. Well, Hospice of Queen Anne's has been here in Queen Anne's County since 1985, started as a volunteer program only, and of course we've expanded from just doing patients in their home environment to nursing homes, assisted livings, and then we also, with the generous support of the community, were able to build our building here in Centerville yeah, in 2007, nice. which was completed in 2008, um, which is a six-bed re residential slash right. general inpatient facility. And since then, we were um, asked by Shore Regional Health if we were interested in becoming the regional hospice for the three counties. So now, um, as of last year, about September, we are now serving Queen Anne's County, Kent, and Caroline counties as well. Okay. So that's why we went with a different name. You know, we were um, very honored to have been Hospice of Queen Anne's for 30 years now. Right. But <clears throat> geographically, it did not make sense, our name being Hospice of Queen Anne's, when we extended into the Caroline and Kent counties. So um, after a lot of thought um, through our leadership team and our staff and also our stakeholders and community, um, we decided on the name Compass Regional Hospice. And we felt like it, um, it gave note to the fact that people were um, charting off in a different direction okay. of course. Right. Um, it's our moral compass because we um, do the right thing for the right people at the right time. So Now, it's, you have the facility there, but mm -hmm. a lot of your care extends out into homes and, it, and yes, things like that. Yes, good point. Um, a lot of times people do think of hospice as just being a place. Right. And certainly we only have six beds at our facility, um, and we don't currently have a facility in Kent or Caroline counties, though we're working with Caroline Hospice Foundation to reopen their three-bedroom residential center oh, for, wonderful. for Caroline County residents, yes, so they can stay in their county. So we're hoping to be able to reopen that sometime in in, um, mid to late summer th okay. of this year um, but yes you're correct that most of our care is provided by to patients and their families right. in their own home environment right. Right. whether that's a nursing home an assisted living a group home or an actual family residence right now we or well didn't interview we were filming I remember one year at a Fourth of July, mm -hmm. and there was a gentleman that just said he was released from hospice. That he yes. had, you know, had the care there in the facility, but he, you know, it wasn't his time. Now that's one of those things that people tend to believe that mm -hmm. it's only, you know, last stages. That's when hospice comes in, right. and that's not always the case. No, actually, um, we our length of stay is very short for to be hospice appropriate. Um, you have to have six months or less approximately to live. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes people don't think about hospice until the very last days or even hours of life. And that really is difficult, not only for the patient and family, but also for us as a hospice provider, because you certainly can't gain a trusting relationship with somebody at that very vulnerable time right. in their lives right. when you only have hours to days to help to coach them through, to get their symptoms under control, and also to get them and their families ready for the transition. Right. So well, it's it's scary. I mean, they don't want to leave their loved ones, but they know. I know that's with my sister. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just the point of you know it, I I want to. I want to just go to sleep and not right. get up. Right. We would really like for people to think about um, Compass Regional Hospice as not the end of life, but to think about us as a transition mm -hmm. in care. Um, we are a health care provider in the three counties. We work very closely with our local hospitals. Um, and, you know, as you said about somebody graduating from hospice, that does happen. Right. You know, sometimes people come into hospice and they have a chronic illness. 
Um, it might not be quite, you know, terminal, but we take care of them for a while, even through our hospice program or our bridges program, which is actually a pre-hospice program that we have now for no charge to, to people to have that when they're not quite at that point of wanting to accept or be appropriate for hospice. Um, but we have all these levels of care so that people can transition early. We right. would rather people get into the hospice early and right. not be scared that, you know what, I'm giving up. Right. Because hospice is not about giving up. It's, it's keeping you comfortable, keep giving you the care you need at the time. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. You have other entities, though, because I know we've talked about Camp New Dawn. Yes. And that grief support that yes you know it's yes what we do, we have renamed that most recently as well through all of our name changes and that is what we call our um the hope and healing center okay and through the hope and healing center we offer grief support and counseling to anybody that is in need of that with any type of loss so oftentimes people think oh well the hospice grief is for if you if your loved one died under that hospice and so you'll get support for 13 months which is part of the regulation for hospice oh, okay. but we get way beyond what we have to offer our communities we don't only offer that but we offer grief support to anyone who's had a loss it could be a suicide a car accident, any type of tra trauma, traumatic loss. Um, we are working on um, getting our counselors trained in PTSD for people returning from the military and being, able, being trying to get back into the community okay. and how things are so different in life now. Um, so we're looking at offering um, pet therapies as well as some alternative um, therapies for relaxation and helping with grief like yoga and Reiki. Mm -hmm. And also our grief counselors have been for years and continue to be in all of our local schools. Um, the school system uses us heavily for our losses, right. you know. Um, and oftentimes they are unexpected losses right. and right. the kids are just devastated yes and trying to figure out how to cope right so so when they come to the senior summit mm -hmm. what types of things um, will you have there for information for people well, we're gonna have a booth and we'll have our staff some staff members and a lot of our volunteers because of course we have to utilize volunteers oh, yeah. heavily <laughs> um, and because we are a nonprofit um, we have over 300 volunteers now and are always looking for qualified people to come help us and our volunteer program spans from anything from answering phones to doing clerical work to actually sitting at the bedside of a patient um, helping with our um, fundraising events so there's lots of opportunities so if anybody would like an opportunity to volunteer I would love them to call Courtney Williams at our office okay and our number is 443-262-4100 okay um, and for what we're also going to have besides people there at our booth we're going to be having a couple giveaways we have some really neat pens as Linda would say, <laughs> who orders them for us. We also have a credit card size magnifier that has Compass Regional Hospice on it. And so that people can put that in their pocket, their wallet or their purse and be able to you read. Know, read. Yeah. That's right. The small print that is often on a lot of different yeah. things that we're trying to read. So um, that and we'll also have some of our brochures with our programs on it so that people can learn more about our services that we offer. Okay. Well, we thank you for coming well, in. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Really Hopefully we'll it. see you out there. It'll be a good day, not the rain like last year, but. That's right. Yeah. We'll pray for good weather. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you. Yeah.